كانت الإمبراطورية التي لا تغيب عنها الشمس وحين غابت بقيت بلاد الملكية العريقة بتقاليدها الراسخة ولغتها وثقافتها التي سادت كثيرا من دول ومجتمعات العالم كانت وما زالت أيقونة القارة الأوروبية بإرثها التأريخي الخاص وحضارتها الثرية المتراكمة ومبدعيها في كل علم وأدب وفن بلاد شكسبير وديكنز وتشيرشل وغيرهم من العظماء وأكسفورد وكامبريدج وغيرهما من معاقل العلم الباذخة البلاد التي لم يخفت وهجها ولم يبهت بريقها وما زالت تباهي وتفاخر بخصوصية ملامحها في الماضي والحاضر My name is Neil Crompton. I'm the British ambassador to Saudi Arabia. I arrived here about a year and a half ago, uh, actually just about the time COVID started in the kingdom. Well, since I arrived, I think I had a, you know, a slightly unusual experience. As I said, I arrived at the same time as COVID, so we were locked down for the first six months. I should say, you know, for me and all the colleagues in the embassy, we felt very safe here. The authorities dealt um, very professionally with the, with the epidemic. And, and when the vaccination program began, uh, we, like all foreigners, were included in that. So we always felt very safe here. And I think life became a little bit more normal after six months or seven months uh, and we were able to um, do more meetings in person and, and travel around the country which has been very enjoyable and see a bit more of, of life in Saudi Arabia. Instead, after the, after the first six months when life relaxed a little bit, we'd taken time to visit a number of places. So I visited some of the commercial centers. You know, we have a consulate in Jeddah Uh, which, which um, both sort of maintains close relations with the business community, but is also responsible for uh, looking after British pilgrims who come for the Hajj or Umrah. Uh, we have a small office in Khoba, uh, the sort of big commercial center. But I've also had uh, time and been lucky enough to travel around, visit uh, some of your beautiful natural spots or, or tourist destinations. So, Been to Medina, been to Alula, uh, had a very enjoyable weekend at uh, Umluj with my son. The sea there is just amazing. Uh, we've done some enjoyable official trips to Farasan and, uh, and Jazan. Saudi Arabia it was always independent. It was never, a, or the Arabian Peninsula was always independent. It was never became a, a mandated territory, a colony in the way some other countries in the Middle East did. So we always had a slightly different relationship with, uh, we were one of the first states to recognize the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia when it was established in the 1930s. Uh, and we always had a close uh, political uh, and security and increasingly economic relationship with uh, the Kingdom. I'll say again, and I'll say it in Arabic if I may. I think, you know, Al Alakat al Thunayin, Bain al Mimnikatin, Yani Tarikhia, Walakin al Shiraka Hadith. It's a modern partnership. It's, it's got history to it, but, it but, but the future is bright. Al Alakat. الاقتصادية بين المملكة وبريطانيا علاقات مميزة لعدة أسباب أولا أن المملكة تعتبر الشريك الأكبر لبريطانيا في العالم العربي والشرق الأوسط ثانيا أن هنالك أكثر من عشر آلاف طالب يدرسون في مختلف المراحل في بريطانيا مبتعثين من المملكة وبالتالي هنالك علاقات مميزة منذ تأسيس المملكة وبريطانيا هي شريك مميز للمملكة طبعا هنالك المشاريع التي تمت مؤخرا وكانت تصب في 
التقنية وفي الخدمات المالية والخدمات الطبية وخدمات السياحة والسفر والترفيه. So I, I think it's a it's a very positive development, and I think the investment that's taking place in Newcastle through the PIF, not just in the football club, but in some of the surrounding area through the consortium, will be will be very welcome to people in the northeast of England. I think it's a good example of the mutual benefits that closer ties bring, and and I think. You know, this probably wouldn't have happened 10 years ago, uh, but it's happened now, and that's, I think, one of the exciting things about the relationship at this point. تم التوقيع على 57 مشروعا مشتركا بين المملكه وبريطانيا اثناء زياره سمو ولي العهد الى بريطانيا في عام 2017 وبالتالي بدات هذه المشاريع ان تؤتي ثمارها وتصب في النواحي التقنيه والتدريب المهني والفني وأيضا في الصحة كما ذكرت والسياحة والفندقة والترفيه I just arrived at the end of June, so I'm still really new to Saudi Arabia and still finding my feet. Um, but this is actually my second time in country because I spent most of my primary school years here as a child in Jeddah. Um, so when this job came up and this opportunity to come here, I was really excited to apply because I thought, okay, this is an opportunity. When else would I get the chance to go back and see where I grew up and be at this country at this time of such significant change? So I'm really lucky to be here now. As a childhood, it was a really happy childhood. I was at a really nice school and um, we used to spend our weekends going down to the Corniche and going uh, swimming in the sea, looking at the coral. And actually, since then, I've, I've had an international career and I've been to lots of um, places. I've been diving and I have yet to see a reef as good as the ones that I remember from, from Jeddah, from the area near Jeddah as a child. So. Um, so actually one of the things I'm really excited to do now over the next few months is to go out there and go and see how it is now, um, you know, all these years later. excited when Saudi Arabia started giving tourism visas I think in 2019 and I'm told um, uh, the second highest number of people who came on tourist visas was from from the UK uh, so I think a lot of people were interested to see everyone always likes to go to somewhere that was you know it feels like it's uh, a new tourism destination um, but I think as I was saying earlier on to some people you know, the economic relationship is diversifying. So in the past, we had, you know, companies who came and been established here for a long time. But I think there are many people now who, who are excited by the new opportunities for uh, to work in the education sector or help develop the education sector or tourism or entertainment or sports. I think that, you know, people will come and watch Formula One. People will come and watch other big events. Some, some people will love to come for the 
Riyadh season. In the embassy, all our relatives now come book, book an annual holiday to come for the Riyadh season. So I think the, you know, there will be a greater flow of people coming back for St. Paul's, and that's good. And I think that um, lots of Britons will enjoy coming here and, and getting a first-hand impression of Saudi Arabia. And I think that will uh, create very pos positive perceptions of the country uh, in, in, in people's eyes back in the UK. I think Vision 2030 is, uh, you know, one of the most ambitious programs that we see anywhere in the Middle East. Uh, and I've been working on the Middle East a long time. And I remember back in 2015, you know, we first heard the term Vision 2030, and we were all asking people, "What does this mean? What does this mean?" And, and you know, we were told lots of things. And then we heard, you know, we heard different little, little bits of news. People say, "This, we want to diversify the economy. Important changes announced." Um, you know. The open cinemas for the first time, or for the first time in recent time, you know, women were allowed to drive. These were sort of striking changes that people in the UK noticed, but I think more importantly made a difference for the lives of Saudis. But but I think it's true to say that in 2015, when we heard about Vision 2030, it was a vision, uh, and it was a groundbreaking vision uh, that you know that talked about a young population that, that wanted more economic and social opportunities. But I think now when we come, and I know that all my colleagues in the embassy feel this, um, and many of my British friends in the community here say, it's, it's not a vision anymore, it's a plan. I really like Riyadh so far. And I think what I've picked up here actually more than anything is a really positive energy. It just really feels like a place that's buzzing and that really feels like it's going somewhere. And without exception, every Saudi that I've met here so far has been really friendly, really hospitable, really kind, but also really enthused about where the country's going and what the opportunities are. And so it's just been, um, it's just been a really energizing place to be in a really positive environment in Riyadh. Um, the other thing that I've done, which I hugely enjoyed in the first few weeks, I took my family to the National Museum here, which is extraordinary. I love museums and um, the National Museum is, is just beautiful. It's so well laid out and it has the whole history of Saudi Arabia from the prehistoric times through to now. And it was just such an interesting experience. So the more of that that I can do while I'm here, the better. I was lucky enough to do a trip to Asia province quite early on um, in my posting here and that was absolutely beautiful. The really mountainous, very green, very fresh and, um, and what I thought was especially interesting about it is the sort of cultural diversity and the um, efforts that are being made to preserve the cultural history of Asia province. Um, the proverbs, the poetry, and also the artwork, which was extraordinary. And we visited um, Fatima's house, which had a fantastic collection from women's perspective, women's um, clothing and artwork, and, and they were using the museum not just to display um, what Asir province has had, but also training um, the new generation in how to continue some of these really, really exquisite um, artistic traditions. So that, that was a fantastic visit. And actually one of the things I enjoyed, especially we visited one of the traditional palaces and they brought us some of the local foods, including the biggest piece of um, 
uh, beeswax honey that I've ever seen. It still had some bees on it and uh, it's absolutely beautiful, really, really delicious, really special. And um, we all took some honey back to give to our families um, back home in the UK. So yeah, it was a really nice trip and very excited to go out and see more of the country now and to just really whetted my appetite to see all the different regions, the diversity, the coast, inland, north, east, west. So really looking forward to getting out and about. So it's one of the changes in Saudi Arabia that I think is the most exciting and, and, and really profound and really significant. And it's something that all the Saudis that I've met themselves really celebrate as well. Um, the women that I've met have been extraordinary, you know, incredibly capable and talented and in quite senior positions, uh, you know, as across government in the private sector as well. Um, I met a very inspirational, the Deputy Minister of Sport, who has really grown Saudi women's football as, 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 a, as, as a sport and is looking to get more women's participation generally in sport from school upwards. And it is so exciting to be here at this time and to do whatever we can to support these, these sorts of changes. So um, I, would, I would love to go and see Al Ula and I think it's incredibly exciting some of the work that's being done archaeologically and all of the, the sort of what's yet to be discovered and all of the new um, places that it's possible to visit like that. I love historical sites, archaeology, museums, so, so as much of that as possible. I'd like to go over to Damam as well, I think there's a big museum complex over there. Um, and looking forward to seeing some of the natural beauty as well. So definitely some desert camping and hopefully at some point some diving or snorkeling. And I must add that my daughter is a very keen horse rider and she's already been horse riding outside Riyadh and we understand there's a big equestrian festival coming and we're really hoping that um, we can go and see that. I believe there's going to be a Saudi women participating in it. So we're really looking forward to that as well. And then I would just say, um, for me professionally, some of the changes that um, Saudi Arabia is going through more generally are really exciting as well. So being here at a time, for example, when um, the Crown Prince has made such significant commitments on climate change, there's a big green initiative coming um, shortly, and, um, and all of the work around that and around preserving the climate, conservation, and you look at what the Saudi government is, is trying to do on the coral reef protection and so on, it is really impressive. And to see some of that unfold and to see how that shapes up, whether it's here in Riyadh or Asir province or, or on the coast, is really exciting as well. So I've got three years to run in this posting and I'm just really looking forward to seeing it all start to, start to unfold and to be here as it delivers. So the UK and Saudi already have really close links. We have a large number of UK citizens that come here every year for Hajj and Umrah, I think well over 100,000. Um, but now is the time to come and see the country in all of its light, with all of its opportunities. There are amazing sites to visit here and it's a really special time to come as it's changing to see how not just not just to see the beautiful diversity, the natural diversity, some of the big events that are hosted here, like the Formula One event and so on, but to actually just come and meet the people and go out, enjoy the food and, and soak up the culture that's here. It's really special, it's really different. And I would strongly encourage um, people in the UK to think about coming to Saudi Arabia and seeing for themselves. And it is fantastically important for the world to hear the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, which is a country in the world most associated with hydrocarbons or oil, saying it's a false choice uh, to choose between growing the economy and protecting the environment. It sends this powerful message that this is an international problem everyone has to deal with. And our new foreign secretary here yesterday, she was talking about wanting to develop, uh, you know, or thicken our development relationship. So we're now working together Saudi Arabia is one of the largest donors in the world. We're one of the largest donors in the world. We're now doing joint projects together, for example, to fund the girls' school 
in Somalia, a girls' education program in Somalia. So these are all new areas. We're dealing with 21st century challenges. So I think, you know, the potential for our collaboration is 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 even greater. That's what I mean when I say it's a modern partnership. So, you know, keep us busy. <laughs> That's what I say. Keep keep welcoming us, and I think the, the potential to um, work together to each other's mutual benefit is immense. And I think enjoy each other's company as, uh, in the way that, that we always have done.